So we got our front view and we got our side view, but what in tarnation goes in the middle that is right in between these two poses? Well, today we're gonna figure that out. All right, so if you can remember the proportions that we used to make these, if you can, conveniently there's a video on it, but essentially all you need to remember is the fact of the thirds of the head, okay? Thirds essentially break down to the hairline, the brow, the nose, and the chin, and no matter what view we see the head in, even if we're about to find the in-between, the three-quarter view of these two, this is still going to apply. One last thing before we jump into that step-by-step, -step, with the three-quarter view, you need to realize that we're dealing with two planes of the head. So this means that we're seeing something in perspective, which means that we are now dealing with angles, and you can see that varying on how they're looking at the camera or how they're tilting their head, we're gonna get angles based off of that. So usually it carries through if the eye is tilted one way, you see the same thing with the nose and mouth, and you can kind of continue that angle. So this isn't a quick tips on perspective, but the best way to think about these two planes is to think about a box in a two point perspective. You're gonna see more of one plane than the other, and each one is going to their individual vanishing point, which gives you kind of the direction of the features. All right, let's get into the steps of this. So first step, just like all the others, we're gonna start with a circle as a base, and yes, it does take me a couple attempts to get the perfect circle for these videos. Once you find one that you like, you're going to go to step two, which is draw a line down the side of the circle to remind us that we're drawing something on an off angle. Step three, we're going to find an ellipse on the side of the circle. This is kind of like cutting off that edge of the circle, and it's very similar to when we drew the circle within the circle for the profile view. I do want to stress this stuff doesn't have to be super precise, but if you want to know the exact measurements of where the circle should line up in here, it's generally if you find half the circle from the, the bottom to the halfway point or from the top to the halfway point, and you find a thirds of those line, it's the top third is where it should line up with the ellipse, like in this visual example. Step four, in that ellipse, you're gonna draw kind of like a plus sign, but the line that's going horizontal is gonna be on a little bit of an angle. Remember the perspective. And yes, if you need to be precise, you can check it here too as well. Step five, we're gonna use that halfway point of the ellipse to find the halfway point of the rest of this ball. Step six, you're gonna steal that angle from the middle of the ellipse there and then use it to find what's gonna become our nose line. Step seven, find the rest of your third. So you're gonna take the space between the two lines that we have, go up to find the hairline, and then you're gonna take it down to find the chin line. At this point, you've found your thirds, but there are still two more features that we have to find before we can move on to the general head shape. Step eight, you're gonna find the halfway point from the top of your ball down to the chin, and this is gonna give us our, say it with me, eye line. All right, and if you find the halfway point between the nose line and the chin, that's gonna give you a general placement for the mouth. Step 10, we're gonna come in and find the rest of the head shape. So we're gonna look for that jaw. So you're just gonna bring a line down from the circle there. And then if you're gonna find where that jaw connects to the head, it's right at where that center line is on the ellipse. I'm not really gonna call this one a step, but if you do notice that something is off like I did with my center line here, feel free to go in and correct that now. Um, I just kind of went and found something that looked a little more accurate for this perspective. Step 11, find the neck. From this angle, the neck kind of just goes straight down with a little bit of a curve. For best results, you know I'm gonna say find a reference. Step 12, it's time to finish it up. So if you have a reference or you're just drawing from your imagination, go ahead and fill in those shapes. Um, not too much I wanna mention here because I want you guys to be able to find your own things, but a couple things to think about. There are some overlapping shapes here. The big one is that nose is probably going to be covering a little bit or a lot depending on the angle of the eye that is furthest away from you. Remember to keep the features on the lines you created in that perspective. And that being said, also remember that the ear is on a different plane, so it's going a little bit to a different perspective line. So keep that in mind too. Check the brown line, see how it changes angles from one plane to the other. Other than that, the best tip I can give is to remember to draw from reference, especially if you're still learning this pose. And this is probably one of the most difficult head poses you can learn, but also the most useful. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments and let me know if you guys have any ideas for future videos. I'm always looking to help you guys out, so I appreciate the ideas. From here, I'm just going to say thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.